Didn't realize we started already. It's okay though. We'll just get right into it. I'm DeAnthony Goodlow, doing a review here on American Crime Story, The People vs. O.J. Simpson. Now, a lot of you guys might not know about it. I did a review a few weeks ago about it. It's one of my favorite shows right now. I think it was awesome. Uh, when I did the, re the review, it was on episode two, and I wasn't really too sure about it yet. But this is the truth right here. This is the truth. It got it's it's really good. So I don't know where you were when the O.J. Simpson trial was going on, but my family was glued to the TV. Everywhere we went, every single where we went, didn't matter where we was at. That's what we was watching. Kinda at the time, I was a little upset because I wanted to watch my cartoons. What's going on here? Why can't I watch no cartoons? But I remember it. I remember that Bronco chase. I remember the courtroom. Everything. So this show is it's not about who you think was guilty or not. It's about what the people actually went through during the trial. So what Johnny Cochran went through, what uh Clark went through, what Shapiro went through, what the family went through, what the jurors went through. So that's why I loved it so much, because it wasn't about oh they should have convicted him. It's just about what happened. So, let's get right into it. It starts off drama. From the gate. And things that I didn't even know. You know, it starts off with killings. Boom, killings. And then O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson getting arrested. And O.J. Simpson having to, you know, get a lawyer. And then episode two, boom, Bronco Chase, all day. Now, Cuban Gooden Jr., he's playing OJ. He was awesome in that Bronco Chase. When he's in that back seat, I thought he was probably going to really kill himself. See, I didn't know that. I didn't know that OJ was about to kill himself in the Bronco. I thought he was thinking about fleeing the country and then changed his mind. But that's not what happened. So, boom. We got action. You know, right off the gate. And then we have the interaction between the defense and the DA. Now, I've always kind of thought, like, I bet you they think this is like a game to them. That they don't really care who is guilty or not because it's a game. Their job is to play the game and win. And I always thought that. So you really get to see how they play against each other. You know, with the all the little little tactics they get to do, you know, and all the complaints, and you know, going and you know, talking to the judge directly, and you know, really get to see all the little things they do to play the game so they can win. So Johnny Cochran and Christopher Darden were like old colleagues, or let's just say Johnny was his mentor, so he really looked up to him. But while we playing the game, there is no friends while we in court. We on the court, in the court, we playing the game, I'm going to play to win. So what Christopher says is, or Darden, he says, yo, you're really not playing fair in there. And Johnny says, I'm not trying to play fair. I'm trying to win. I was like, dude, trying to win, son. Trying to win. I'm not trying to hear none of that. My client paid me to do a job. And that's what I'm going to do. The state pays you to do a job. And that's what you're going to do. So I'm not here to play fair. And that, that was really intense scene. Like, young buck, not here to play fair. I'm here to play to win. Now Sarah Paulson plays Clark. Now, I like, I don't know if Clark was like this, but I like how Sarah makes them words sting. She make them sting. She'd be like, what the, do you mean? What are you saying right now? Like, I mean, I'm not an actor, so I can't say it like her, but she really made me feel like this was her job and her life. Courtney Vance is in there. He plays Johnny Cochran. He is awesome. I can see how he got Angela Bassett. At first I was like, man, how you get that? 
But he on point. He on point and intense. So I can see how he can get Angela. He can bag that. Because Angela, fine. She fine. Not in, she fine. So, what I'm saying is, everyone did a good job. Uh, John Travolta did a good job. Sarah Paulson did a good job. Now, there was some people, everyone was in this. So, like, the guy from, I don't know if you guys ever seen it, but the guy, the head guy from Drumline was in there. He was in there. He was a uh, black power guy. And I thought that was kind of cool. I'm not really sure why he was in there or why he needed to be in there. But I think this was such a big case that everyone wanted to be a part of this project. So whatever role they can get, they wanted to get. And he did a good job, though. Um, he wasn't in there a lot, but he did a good job. Um, the guy from the Cosby's, the older son, Malcolm somebody, he did a good job. He wasn't necessary, really. But I think, like I said, it was such a good, such a big case that everyone wanted to be a part of the project. But he wasn't really in it that much. He was the actually, he was the driver. He was the friend that drove him around. I would have liked to know why he was a friend or what made him such a good friend. But they didn't do that, so whatever. Everyone did a good job. Even OJ's best friend, the guy from Friends, I forget his name, he did a good job. So, the ending. Spoilers, if you want to watch it, watch it. If not, I'm going to just talk about some of the things that happened. There's no spoiler because we already know what happened. We already know. But anyway, last episode, some things I want to talk about. I really appreciated how they gave Ron Goldman a voice because everyone was talking about how, like at least in the, in the documentaries that I've watched, that Ron Goldman didn't really have a voice. It was more just about OJ and his wife and Ron was just like you know a side piece and didn't really matter so they showed his father a lot so it kinda gave reverence to that family that we didn't forget about you and I appreciate that doesn't matter if I think that OJ did it or not somebody died so I can appreciate how they gave him a voice um, Little things like, you know, showing some details of OJ in jail and him writing on the wall. I thought that was pretty cool. One thing that I that I noticed is that Robert Shapiro didn't understand the black struggle. And it really came out in the last episode. Really the last two episodes. But it came out because he just didn't get why Johnny was doing the was using the tactics that he was using. He didn't really want to make it a whole black versus white thing or uh, civilians versus cop thing. But really, it, it needed to be. That tactic needed to happen to get him off. So when he does it, Robert is kind of like, oh, I don't know. I'm going to wear this policeman badge to show that I still support the policeman. You know, so he was still trying to save face. He was trying to, you know, save his career after the trial was over, which... I guess I get it, but it's funny how, I'm going to just say it, how white people or some people just don't understand the black struggle, so when we're trying to make it a race thing, they don't get it. And it was really eating at him about when, when he was using that, when Johnny was using that tactic. And I get it, because if you don't understand, you don't understand, and you got you got to live after this trial. And I, I saw I get it, but I thought that was really that was really interesting how they, they how they showed that. So once they won the trial, Darden walks up to Johnny and he's like, "You didn't change anything. You think you did by playing this black card, but really you didn't change anything. We're still gonna get beat. We're still gonna be um, falsely accused. We're still gonna be stereotyped. We're gonna be pulled over unjustly." These things are still going to happen. So I know that you did all these tactics and, you know, you you was chucking and jiving. Yes. But really, you didn't change anything. I appreciated that. You know, because really he didn't. Because we still go through this stuff now. You know, and it's sad that it has to be a race thing sometime, but sometimes it just is. And some, we need to talk about things so that it's not, but 
until then, I appreciate what Johnny did. I appreciate his tactics. I appreciate it. Because I never know. I might be in that same situation one day. And I know for sure I ain't killing nobody. Also, what I thought that was kind of funny was that the president that gave us the three strike rule was making a uh, sentimental plead or um, giving some type of reverence to the trial and wishing that things didn't have to be like that. It was so funny because the three strike rule really was uh, geared towards black people. So I thought that was kind of funny. There's a little, little things in there that they did that I, that I appreciated. So they also talked about why Clark was so adamant about getting um, OJ sending OJ to jail and it's because when she was younger she had got raped so she didn't but the guy got away and she felt like justice didn't prevail but and and she feels that justice should always prevail for the victim and but that's not what justice is justice is getting the right person setting it straight balancing out the odds. That's what justice is. So it's two sides. It's not just the victim. We want the, the we want the victim to have justice for sure. Well really that's really not what it should be about. It should be I need to make the right decision and and making sure the right person goes to jail. Not just whoever I pick. Somebody gotta go. Someone's going down. And I'm like, well, I get it, but is the right person though. Oh and then Mark Furman, the guy that was proven to be a racist, ended up being a commentator on what news show? You want to guess? Do you want to guess what news channel? Fox. <laughs> funny. So funny. That's the most racist, one-sided, right-sided, uh, discriminatory channel ever. It's not even news. Can't call Channel 11 news. So... Thought that was kind of funny that he ended up on there. Then at the end, they say that O.J. Simpson was arrested for stealing paraphernalia. Well, he was arrested for trying to get back his own paraphernalia. And it wasn't that he broke in somewhere. Somebody said, we got some of your stuff up in a hotel. Do you want to buy it? They said that he robbed him. He goes to jail. That's what happened, but, you know, that's not mainstream, and maybe you don't even believe that. But that's what I've read, that's what I've seen on the documentary, and that's what I choose to believe. I like how they, well, I don't like how they left that part out, that it was just all paraphernalia. Well, what kind of was it? What was it? Was it, you know, stuff that belonged to the... USC organization? Was it something that belonged to the Bills organization? What was it? And they didn't say that. But overall, it was a great show. If I could have been binge watched it, I would have for sure. But it comes on FX if you want to watch it. Everyone did really well. Um, it kind of made me like wish I would have paid more attention when I was little. You know, so that I could, like, really see if they portrayed the, the characters or the people properly. But everyone was saying that was pretty accurate of, you know, the events that happened and the timeline. So, maybe it was. I thought it was really good. Either way, um, Cuba Gooding, he's trying, to, he's trying to be a different actor. I think you should keep doing stuff like that. Because, honestly, I haven't really seen a lot that I've enjoyed from him. But anyway, go see it. Check it out. It's really good. I think you guys would enjoy it. I think anyone that likes law would enjoy it. That's interested in law would enjoy it. Anyone that's interested in the process of um, arresting and actually convicting um, a person would be interested. Anyone just likes that intellectual value. It had a lot of intellectual value. You know, those little things, little games that they would play was awesome. So, all right. Well, let me know what you think. It's my review. American Crime Story, The People vs. O.J. Simpson. Let me know. Go ahead and like it. Subscribe. Comment. 
Do what you do. I'm out of here. D'Anthony Goodlow. Peace.